Folks, we are back again, and this time it's my most exciting project yet. Back in episode three, I printed and painted the walking mausoleum from Elden Ring. Today, I am creating a Limgrave diorama scene to go with it. This is my first time making scenery, so we'll have to see how it goes, but I've stocked up with kits from Woodland Scenics, and I'm ready to make something magical from the lands between. So without further ado, let's get started. And engage in jolly cooperation. To kickstart this project, we are creating some rocks using the Rock Faces kit from Woodland Scenics. First things first, you want to measure out the water to plaster mixture. The best thing for you to do is read the instructions properly, which is something I learned quite quickly with this. It's meant to be one cup of plaster mixture to one third of a cup of water. So you can see me here just sloshing around this plaster flavored water, splashing it all over my desk without a care in the world. One thing they recommend to do is spray some soapy water into the mold, which will allow the plaster liquid to fill all the cracks and it reduces the amount of air bubbles that dry into the plaster. Now to pour it in and, hmm, this doesn't seem right. That's odd. Never mind, just clean up and try again. It's good to balance the mold on some items to keep it raised and balanced as you pour the mixture in. So I'm just gonna use some makeshift stuff I have lying around. So just pull this back in and, oh God, it's going everywhere. That's all going wrong. Why is this happening in the first stage? Ah, oh, let's, let's clean this mess up and let's just take a look here and, ah, oh, crap. Ah, oh, you read the instructions backwards. You made three cups of water to one cup of plaster, you idiot. So now learning from the mistakes, I'm taking a measuring cup and measuring out one cup of plaster to one third of a cup of water. This seems more like it. Mix that up all nice like. Now pour the correct thick plaster liquid into the mold and make sure it can sit and balance in this little makeshift rig. Just leave that to sit and dry for up to an hour. After a lunch break and a secondary read of the instructions for safety, it's time to peel out the hardened rocks. I'll tell you what, they look pretty cool, right? I think they're gonna sit well within the landscape. Now it's recommended to leave these overnight so they can toughen up. So I'll take these away, put them aside, so we can get to work on building the area. I have here an A4 sheet of thin wood. I think what I'm going to do is put the mausoleum on the corner, on like a raised mountain or hill, and build out some higher and lower plateaus that we can put our rocks on. So here I have this massive A4 slab of crafting foam. I didn't realise it was going to be this big when I bought it, but we work with what we got and I'm going to cut into this to form the landscape. I don't have a hot wire to cut into this, so I'm going to attempt to use a Stanley knife. Well, this is a stupid idea. Look at the size of this thing compared to my knife. New plan. Big bread knife, the weapon of gods. Wow, this is so much harder than I anticipated. Is this a bad idea? Probably. Am I gonna commit to this? Definitely. If I had a wife and kids, I'd tell them I loved them because I don't think I'm making it out of this one in one piece. I am literally sweating trying to cut into this stuff. Folks, if you want to cut into big thick foam, just get a hot wire. This is a nightmare. Well, finally we've got the first piece cut and what a workout that was. You gotta be a full strength build for this. Second one's easier because of the angles. Now drenched in sweat, I can start mapping out where to put these pieces. Just spreading some PVA glue on the base of the foam pieces. I'm just gonna spread them out over the wood base. Now in all honesty, I was so defeated by that first attempt that I left this project for like four weeks. But I finally came back. I readjusted the foam placements to stretch across the whole base. And coming back to this project, it looks pretty different right here. But let me explain what I've done here for you. You can see the different levels of the cliff I've made. And what I've done is bought some cheap polyfiller, which you can get at any hardware store. And I plastered it all over the foam and placed the rocks throughout it on the sides of the cliffs, on the tops of the hills, on the floor, 
and just spread them around to make it look natural. I painted on thick layers of filler across it to fill the gaps and also to cement the rocks down. So it creates this uneven, natural looking rocky terrain, perfect for Limgrave. The next step was to sand down and spray the sides and the base of the scenery with some Chaos Black Primer just to keep it tidy. Next up is painting the rocks. And with the same rock face kit as we got in the mold and plaster, they also supply paint washes to paint the rocks with. We have a black wash which is mixed one part black to 32 part water. I use a teaspoon to measure this. And yes, I double checked the instructions to make sure I hadn't read them backwards. We also have burnt umber and yellow orchard, which are mixed both one part paint to 16 part water. The technique used for the washes is called leopard spotting, which I'll show you here. Just take a cheap wide brush and just start dabbing on the paint, starting with the yellow orchard. Just cover the majority of the rocks with this. Then do the exact same thing with the burnt umber. Just dab it across the rocks in random areas, keeping it non-uniformed and natural looking. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Who knows? The next step is to apply the black wash. The reason it's got double the amounts of water is that it's just used to thinly cover the entirety of the rocks to bring the tone way down and give it that grey look. They look pretty rocking. Nice. Now the second kit we're using is the landscape kit, also from Woodland Scenics. So they have some earth texture, which you mix with water as a ratio of two to one, and that is correct this time. They also supply this helpful sponge that you can use to dip into the mixture and just spread it across all of the areas where there would be mud. I've got to say, this is actually starting to take shape. Maybe I do know what I'm talking about. Too early to tell, who knows. So I'm not fully satisfied with the flooring yet, so I'm just using this earth texture stuff from Green Stuff World and just liberally applying it to the areas where I feel there would be the most nature. This stuff dries pretty hard, so it's fine to apply big thick layers in parts. And just leave that for a while to dry. Now in the next kit, it's the static grass kit, again from Woodland Scenics. In this they supply you with a handy glue brush which is in something called static tack which I think is just a sort of PVA glue mixture. Apply this all over the earth. Not the earth as a whole but like all over where the earth would be on this. It's important you let the earth texture dry before doing this otherwise the glue will just take it off as you brush it on. Now they only supply you two different types of grass within this kit to get you started but for now that's fine. In the supplied shaker pot I am pouring in the rich green 4mm grass and putting in the smaller of the two sieve guards as you can see here. And just as if you were applying a mountain of parmesan to your favourite pasta dish, just start pouring this grass all over, making sure to cover all the glue. Doesn't this look cool? Repeat the same step with the longer grass, it has a bit more yellowy dead look to it which should look quite nice and natural when mixed in with the lusher green. I've just noticed I need to paint this little missing part of the cliff quickly. Give me two secs. Just before we shake over this long grass, we're just going to use a thatch comb they supplied to shift in the excess grass that hasn't settled into the static tack. Flip that sucker upside down and shake out its lunch money. Now just over the top of the first grass layer, I'm using the Scenery Cement Spray. Again, just another PVA glue mix which came with the landscape kit. Now we can start shaking on the longer grass. And here I'm just using my fingers and pinching in different areas to tuft up the grass together to give it some more realism and texture. Now with the deep green foliage we got in the kit, and with some more burnt coloured foliage that I already had, I'm just going to start dipping it in the PVA and start dotting them all over the scene. Time to let all of this dry together. Now it's time to remove the excess long grass, just by using the comb and then taking its lunch money again. 
Something I also ordered was this fireweed plant, and there's a bunch of flowers in Limgrave you can pick for crafting stuff. Did you craft stuff in it, or did you just like completely forget like everyone else? I think I crafted some stuff. Not a lot. Anyway, these plants come with a self-adhesive base, so it's just a case of peeling them off and sticking them on. Trees. I also bought trees. Different sizes and different variations. This will also help give some scale perspective to the mausoleum, as well as just looking pretty. So just super glue in the base of them, I'm going to dot all of these around different areas. Worryingly, I'm going against the rules and I'm just applying another layer of lush green grass because I preferred the colour of it to this longer stuff and I'm just going to shake over some more till I'm happy with how it looks. Now to buff out some of this greenery, I'm grabbing some different shades of grass turf from the landscape kit and just start spreading out this around areas of the grass to bulk it up. I'm using some burnt grass shades as well for areas that I want the grass to appear a bit less lush and a bit more burnt and dead. To bulk out some more areas, I'm sprinkling in some of the coarse turf to different areas to add some more variation. Then I'm just letting this dry overnight and coming back to finish it off tomorrow. Back to it the next day and I have here some 3D printed ruins and pillars that I've done a dirty dry brush on. I'll be super gluing these across different parts of the scene to really add the Elden Ring look to it all. I think this looks pretty balanced. Make sure they're firmly pressed down to the ground. To add the last little bits to this scene, I'm just going to be putting on some coarse turf and some foliage clumps around the ruins and big rocks, as if there were weeds growing out from the base of them. Is that how weeds work? I'm pretty sure that's how weeds work. So just gluing all these around the different parts and just layer up some different bushes of foliage. And I think it's about time we add the piece de resistance to it. The mausoleum. So I'm just going to lather up this dude's feet with some super glue and plonk him right in the corner that we've kept free. And you know what? I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. It wasn't perfect and we made a good amount of mistakes to get there. But if you're not willing to make mistakes, you'll never learn. And as long as we have fun doing it, that's all that matters. I'm thinking of making a snowy mountain top of giants as my next diorama, like having like a nice little snow scene or something. If you think that's a good idea or have an idea for a different scene, leave a comment and I'll be sure to have a go. But that's it from me and the lands between. If you could be kind enough to drop a like and butt slam the subscribe button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Peace out, Lonely Tarnished.